Okay, so you can get yourself comfortable again now. And close your eyes. Actually, it's best not to lie down because then you will actually fall asleep and actually your snoring will probably affect a lot of people around you. Okay. And then <coughs> close the eyes. And then with the eyes closed, Bring your attention into the present moment with your body. How are you sitting now? And can you make this physical posture a little bit more comfortable so there's less chance you get telephone calls throughout the meditation? And once the, the body is comfortable, this is the time now to take the telephone off the hook. So you're not going to receive any telephone calls from any parts of the body. As you're sitting now, so it shall remain. And make this resolution that this is your meditation time. You've worked in your garden. It may not be perfect, but it's good enough. Now is the time to rest the mind not to plan, not to criticize. It's meditation time. And as you are experiencing your mind inside now, can you also experience again what I mean by the experience and the commentary? See if you can pay more attention to the experience of now without trying to name it, to talk about it, or to judge it. If you have difficulty bringing the mind to pure experience, again just watch an aspect of feeling what are the feelings in your face right now? The tingling or the heat, the cold, without naming them, just experience them. Sometimes you can't put a name to these things, which is marvellous. It gives you an opportunity to just experience. Experience of the feelings in your face as they happen right now. always changing. attention on pure experience. Then start to experience the breath. Just one breath at a time. Not forcing the breath. Just experiencing it without interfering. as if the breath were out there and you were in here separating the observer from the observed
The journey of a thousand breaths is just one breath long. Put all your attention on the breath happening now. No past, no future, just now. Not desiring this moment to be anything other than it is. There may be two bad bricks in this moment, but there's a lot of good bricks here as well. Just let go and notice contentment in the moment. If you're feeling fuzzy, just a little bit more energy inside. Just notice more of the breath. Not just in and out, but the very beginning to the end of each breath. See if you can notice a beautiful breath. The breath of peace. The mind is too active. Let's go more towards the experience rather than the commentary. Notice the gaps between thoughts where pure experience lives. Just dwelling in the moment, just now, now, now. Remember this desire or aversion take you out from now. Learn contentment and the mind stays present.
getting close to the end of the meditation now. How do you feel? There's an experience without putting it into words. You should know that peace of mind is an experience, not a thought. going to ring the gong shortly. When the gong is rung, don't end the meditation, just open the eyes and carry on meditating for a few more moments. Open the eyes. Don't move yet. And how do you feel? So you know the result of a meditation. You know how it feels in mind and body. And then when you are ready, come out of the meditation and start to move again. moments in the meditation I'd like you to, to encourage you to do because a lot of time when we meditate we're, we're doing work in a sense we're aiming the mind towards peacefulness and sometimes when we get there we fail to we could fail to spend a few minutes experiencing the fruit of our meditation we're just sitting there without trying to make the mind any more peaceful or quiet, just experiencing the results of what we've been doing. And if one can experience the results of all that you've done in a meditation, you should notice that the mind is much quieter than when it began. The body is more relaxed than when it started. And then you notice this meditation actually is working. Even though that you may consider yourself a novice, even at the early stages, it brings results, let alone as one gains more skill in making the mind quiet. So, are there any questions anyone would like to ask about some of the problems and difficulties you experience in meditation? Yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're saying that sometimes that uh, if the body uh, creates problems Sometimes it's about to get peaceful and you feel you're falling asleep and then the body wants to do something to wake itself up. Uh, with this meditation, try and just forget about the body completely. Just ignore it. Leave it alone. You, you've, you've done so, so much for your body. You, know, you feed it, you wash it, you evacuate it, you do all sorts of things making this body uh, comfortable. Uh, but sometimes the only way you can really make it comfortable is just to leave it alone. It's just like parents with children. When you tie them up in bed at night, you, you may read them a story and you just tip them out of the room and what do they do? Mum, mum, I want a glass of water. Mum, mum, read me another story. And if you keep giving them extra glasses of water or if you keep reading them stories, they never go to sleep. There comes a time when you just say, enough. And they might shout, mum, mum, please read me a story. I want a glass of water. Somebody's... Uh, you know, my brother's hitting me. You just leave them alone. <laughs> and then they go asleep. They're just calling for attention. There's one meditator once 
she had two young children and she was trying to find her time to meditate during the day and she would sit down and start watching her breath then her children would start calling Mum, Mum, I want a glass of water she would do nothing, she would just keep just watching her breath and then they they start getting serious Mum, Mum, John has got a knife out of the, the kitchen Sarah's turned on the gas but she would do nothing, she just sat there and when that bluff didn't work they started crawling all over her, pulling her long hair she didn't move and after they did that they left her alone now every time she meditates they just sit down quietly, they don't get the knives out of the kitchen cupboard and they don't turn on the gas <laughs> they just wanted attention, that's all and now she's won her meditation time she, she can sit there and the children just amuse themselves sometimes they just come and sit next to her this is what you have to do to your body as well sometimes it is just restlessness of the body, just the body wants some attention leave it alone and it goes away however sometimes if you sit for longer periods of time there may be some physical problems actually no real problems are there uh, quite often because you didn't start sitting properly in the first place but if you sit in a very good position there should be very little pain uh, so if you do feel um, some aches or pains in the body I'd like to encourage the following procedure first of all and whenever like an ache or a pain or an itch comes up which says like scratch me or move me just go straight back to the breath, ignore it if it arises again, ignore it a second time if it arises a third time, scratch me ignore it a third time if it happens a fourth time then very mindfully just watch that experience what is this itching anyway, what does it feel like? without trying to get rid of it just experience what it's like to itch very few people know what itching really is like because as soon as it happens they scratch it and it goes away so we just investigate it without moving and while we're investigating it, whether it's an itch or a pain as soon as it says do something to me, I can't stand it any longer just carry on investigating if this you know, get rid of me arises a second time again ignore it, a third time ignore it and if a fourth time you really can't stand it any longer then very quietly move or very softly just move your hand up and scratch slightly by doing this method the first three times the distraction comes up you just go back to the breath a lot of the times the distraction doesn't arise anymore it just disappears by itself you're testing it out to see whether it's a serious distraction or not if it is a serious distraction then the next thing you do is go towards it the fourth time it arises and you investigate it what is an itch? what is pain? what is discomfort? what you're doing there is building up a little bit of endurance a little bit of understanding about what pain is what itch is and what discomfort is a lot of times it just goes away then you can go back to the, the main meditation object, the breath however if you really can't stand it after four times the, the thought comes up I can't stand it, I've got to do something about it then you can do something about it and that builds up some patience it builds up some tolerance it builds understanding but it doesn't go so far that you're in dangerous pain and you just ignore it completely so that's a very good way of just gently just dealing with these physical distractions so try that little method when you get a feeling in the body which takes you away from the breath just first three times ignore it and go back to the breath doesn't matter what it is if it persists then go to that feeling then investigate it and see what it's like like some time ago during the summer time I was given this instruction and as soon as I gave this instruction about how to deal with feelings we started to meditate and straight away like a fly landed on my mouth just start to test me and so I went back to the breath three times but the feeling of a fly crawling around your mouth was quite sort of disturbing and so then you started to investigate it you started to feel it you know, actually just the edges of your mouth are much more sensitive to the middle you did about three or four laps <laughs> very slowly <laughs> and you just watched it so it went round and round and then when it had enough, it sort of went off 
So that's an interesting just thing which you can do to actually understand just these. It wasn't really unpleasant. It was just uh, just a feeling. You can actually be at peace with some of these feelings. But you can do this with like a little fly, which doesn't really hurt. Then maybe you can be at peace when you have physical pain of a sickness or an injury, which sometimes we do have to deal with in life. So this is a way to be at peace with distractions and disturbances. Now does that make sense of your question or did you want to come back with a comment? Okay. Has anyone else got a question about did some yes? Yeah. Again, it's someone who's had like an operation, had some, or, or had some sort of trauma, some difficulty in the body. Okay. A lot of times, look, when the, you meditate, what you're doing is that the mind is getting out of the way, and the body is looking after itself. And sometimes, that because the mind is always in control, it actually stops the body healing itself. And if you can just let the let the the body do what the body has to do. The body is balancing itself. Quite likely it is, yes. As long as you're not ordering it. Yeah, it's just happening naturally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. You're saying that sometimes that when you're sitting, this is for the, uh, the tape because sometimes when we're recording any of these talks you can hear my answer but you can't hear the question it becomes very frustrating what's he answering, what was the question so I'm just repeating the question for the tape machine you're asking in brief that uh, sometimes that when you're sitting you, you feel these like uh, movements in your body as if someone's massaging your stomach sometimes or exactly what is it and what should you be doing if there is some sort of physical um, uh, problem in the body uh, because of some I say operation or accident or some sickness. If the mind can get out of the way, you know, this is the controlling you. you. Always wants it this way and that way and just leave it alone. A lot of the time the body just balances itself. And it does what the body needs to, be, to do. Uh, the important thing is that you just don't do anything. You just sit back as like the disinterested observer and just watch all these things which are going on. And you find that things balance themselves and things get cool and soft. And you know, there may still be movement in there, and sometimes it may be a little bit painful at first, but it should start to relax and get very, very peaceful. Because a lot of the time is that whenever there's a pain, we tend to tense up around it, and we sort of make more problem about that pain than was there in the first place. And if you just leave it alone, the whole thing starts to relax and open out. So that will happen if there are any tensions in the body. Meditation will relax those tensions. It's if you know you've got like a, a cut on the finger, say, and so you put like a, a plaster around it. You clean it up. You put a plaster around it. It will heal itself up if you leave it alone. If you keep on sort of every five minutes looking, how's it going, and then how's it going, and scratching it to make it heal quicker, then of course it doesn't. You just leave it alone, and the body knows how to to heal itself. So just leave it alone and see what happens. If the body's doing it itself, then it becomes quite interesting. You're just watching this body do all these interesting things and it's not yours. It's just an amazing experience. You just see if it's watching somebody else's body. So has anyone else got any questions out for us? Oh, we have quite a few, yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, usually, it's the opposite of being strengthened. It's usually uh, because a lot of these desires for perfection is like not really wise. 
You know, it's, actually, it is, life is really pretty good. You know, the wars are in your life are pretty good, but you always want it to be more than it is. And quite often it's like the imperfections in life make it beautiful. The, uh, the clouds and the sky at night and the evening make the beautiful sunsets. If it's a perfectly clear sky, you don't get nice sunsets. It's uh, the imperfections in the forest, the gnarled trees, make it an interesting and beautiful forest. If the land was all flat and the trees were planted in lines and rows, it wouldn't be beautiful at all. So a lot of the times it's the imperfections which we can really appreciate as part of life and part of beauty. And so usually what happens when we understand about this meditation and start becoming peaceful, then we can gain more contentment in life. More contentment with some of the pains in the body, more contentment with the partner we have in life, more contentment with our job, with our role in life, we don't get so fault-finding. So when your mind is peaceful, you find you don't see so many faults in life. And you can be more at peace with life when you can be more at peace with yourself. You might try and spend your whole time trying to make your garden perfect. You make your garden perfect. It reminds me of like a, a Japanese Zen story. About you know these Japanese gardens which you may have seen in, in movies or in the documentaries. There was one monk who was very famous for his garden. Every morning he would go into that garden, there was a big tree. I forget what tree it was, a plum tree or something. And he would collect all the old leaves which had fallen the night before. Like hundreds of them. And he would put them in two baskets. In one basket he would put all the beautiful leaves. And then in the other basket he would put all the rubbish leaves. The rubbish leaves he would throw away behind the temple. And the beautiful leaves he would spend hours putting in the right place on the lawn around the tree. Just one by one. And sometimes he would look back and he would change them. If they were not perfect. Just the right colour in the right place. And after working like this all morning, he'd open his garden up for inspection for others. And he had such a, such a touch that his garden was so beautiful that people came from, from great distances to admire his garden. And one day, a great wise meditating monk came there and watched him all morning, taking all the leaves, uh, figuring out which was a beautiful leaf and which was the not so beautiful leaf throwing the ugly leaves away, and then one by one, placing all these leaves just in the right spot. And when the monk was finished, the, the one doing the leaves, this old monk, the meditation monk, said, that's really amazing. Only there's one thing wrong with your garden. And when he said that, the monk who had this beautiful garden was taken aback. What do you mean, one thing wrong? <laughs> he was a perfectionist. Well, I can tell you if you really want me to. Please tell me what's wrong with my, my garden. And then the, the meditation monk got hold of the tree and shook it and shook it and shook it and shook it. Shook it. And there were all these leaves fall all over the place. And then the meditation monk, there, now it's perfect. Do you get the, un the idea of that story? Because like perfection, the idea of perfection is not real. Real perfection is just with nature. So once you understand how to meditate, you'll find you're more at peace with the world and more at peace with natural gardens rather than these fake gardens. So there's another question over there, yes? Yeah. Approximately how long do you meditate for? So today. It was about 15 minutes today. Sometimes uh, if you get peaceful, the time just flies past and you don't notice how much time has gone. If the meditation is working, you're staying in the moment, a thousand mile journey is just so short. Well, I think uh, because some people are, are leaving now and have to go, I think we can call an end to uh, the meditation session this afternoon. Uh, if you have any questions to ask, you can come up and ask them afterwards, or if you wish to have a cup of tea in the reception room, there's uh, tea available there, or if you wish to visit our library, you are welcome to do so. But thank you for coming. And next week we'll be continuing at the same time with the third in the instalment of the introduction to meditation. So thank you for coming today. <laughs>